So. Oh. Um, next up we've got some, uh, what are they? Runts. Now if you read that quickly you might see another word, but yeah, runts it is. Thoughtful portions again on the back. 12 pieces, 60 calories. So, no doubt that... Uh, I'm sure many Americans will just open up the box and have 12 pieces, won't they? So anyway, um, I can't actually tell you what these are, it just says flavoured with natural flavours. Oh, well, I'll just put that box up. These are actually kind of like, shaped like the fruits. Shaped like that's a strawberry, an orange, and a banana. So, how oh, hard? I expect them to be chewy there, but they weren't. Actually, it does taste the banana. Giving me sooty sweets is a complete not a waste time, I just could not suck sweets. American sweets kind of taste like sweets you used to get years ago when you were a kid. And that's probably because they're still made with with sugar. Opposed to healthy sweets that we try and give our kids in this country nowadays. Inside the little, there was like a, like a little box of American things from Mum uh, got us Nestle stuff. We got something called a uh, hundred grand bar. Cherry caramel and milk chocolate Christmas crunchies. And the Baby Ruth Bar. Um, and that is bursting with peanuts, rich caramel and chewy nugget. So, I'll have a quick bite of the 100 grand. Like I say, I'm not going to eat all of these because uh, I'm trying to be good. So. I mean, it doesn't look particularly appetising, but... Like a God, what's that that we get over here? Toffee crisp, but like a cheap version of a toffee crisp. There's two little bars in there. Not brilliant. Assuming the baby roof bar is going to be oh, not in two pieces. Looks like a uh, um, like a misshaped Snickers. Anyway. I'm dropping chocolate all over my green screen. Here. Right, I don't know what I lost there, but uh, obviously I had to do a battery swap out on the camera. Um, so yeah, the Baby Ruth. Kind of. Again, like a cheap Snickers bar. In all fairness, I don't know how the Americans are all fat. 
Sorry, I'm just picking chocolate up off my green screen. Um, yeah, I don't know how the Americans are all so fat, because that's, that's really bad. Not, not nice at all. Right, so, like I say, that uh, I had a, a, a gigantic um, clear down on Facebook as well. Um, the main reason for that being was that I knew I was going to start uh, blocking my life a little bit more on on um, YouTube channel. So I didn't necessarily want, well, in all fairness, it comes through Facebook as well. So I didn't want more people who are on Facebook, who the type of people who are just there to nose into your life but don't actually contribute anything to it. Um, you know, Facebook is what it is. But Facebook to me is a platform, it's a platform to um, keep in touch with people. And it's a platform for me to share moments of my family's life with the world. The world that I choose to share it with. So I kind of knew that you know there's quite a lot of people in there who pretty much don't deserve to be in there. So they were just literally there for have a nose when things you know when you're up you're down and I don't need that kind of person to be honest with you I don't need them in me in my life at all and I certainly don't need them on my Facebook and I certainly don't need them following my life so um like I say uh, I've got a couple of more a couple of more reviews to come this week um I'm gonna do them when I get the batteries charged on those more because I haven't been very lively today I'm also gonna um talk a little bit about the equipment I use here, and um, Osmo is a, it's a cracking piece of kit. It's what I use to um, to do the um, footage at the Collie Walk. Um, like I say, beautiful, still, stabilised. The, the gimbal on the camera is absolutely phenomenal. It records in 4K. Beautiful piece of kit. Got its disadvantages as well, but uh, mostly, mostly it's a positive. Positive device. I do love it as a camera. It's one of the best video cameras I've ever owned, and I've had a few. Um, so yeah, that that's that's me plans anyway for the the next the next two years because that's how long it's gonna take to finish R2D2. So hopefully they don't go bust before it's finished. So I'll just have half an R2D2, and I'll be like you know a few hundred quid lighter, which will not be too fantastic in all fairness. But yeah, um. I can see I'm gonna I'm gonna run a review on the cube Caligas QP because if anybody's got a small space that you know they need to heat up um but don't want a traditional Caligas fire, um absolutely fantastic. It's, we've we've tried it and it's absolutely brilliant. Um and obviously the Dyson. Um this this kinda happened as well because um a friend Ruth, she got a Dyson off a friend and uh she has a lot of border collies, so I was thinking, well, if it can get dog hair off her carpets and floors, then it must be pretty good because she has more dogs than me, so I was figuring therefore more dog hair. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm well impressed with that. Well impressed with it. And I, I don't know, whenever I thought of a cordless hoover, I always thought of like the, you know, the dust bus that you used to have on the wall that and it didn't black and deck me them and it just didn't pick an out up really. But I suppose technology's moved on a bit since then. So yeah, I'm gonna like I say I'll cover over that. Um I'm trying to think if there's anything else memorable happened so far this year. Oh yeah, the car, the uh, the beautiful Audi Old Road I've got, um decided to have a little hissy fit. Um literally four days before um we went up to Scotland. It's the it's the first car I've, I've had that um that has an e-brake, which is basically an electronic handbrake. Um, phenomenal idea in principle, and most cars are going that way. I mean, I think I think we'll see the the demise of the manual handbrake in in the next few years. I can see it coming. Um, but obviously, with that car being quite a bit older, it was probably one of the first motors that they introduced this handbrake to. And you would have thought in the day and age that if something electrically is is switched on to hold the car still you would have thought that if there was an electrical failure you would have some sort of fail safe to be able to wind that handbrake off uh, no so I had to do a bit of basically one of the wires on the back of the motor which you know, when you pull the switch it winds the motor on and then it winds it back off one of the motors the wires had corroded but obviously it's been outside in the rain for 10 years so you know it was it's pretty enough um, 
I had to do a bit of. Luckily, I, I do know lyrics, and I had to do a bit of lying on me back and with a bit of wire and a bit of wire strippers, and just try and make a little jimmy to get the handbrake back off. And then I uh, haven't used it since because I didn't dare put it on. So quite an expensive little job. I've got to get two wiring harnesses because I'll do the passenger side as well because that's likely to to go tits up as well. So I'm going to get both of them done. I've watched a lovely review on the net um, on YouTube with somebody did the same work that I've got to do and it doesn't look overly bad apart from the colour of the panels getting off so I'm going to end up like doing that myself so um, yeah that's that's us up to now um, thanks Margaret for the Scottish tablet absolutely wonderful um, obviously I've promised Ruth that I'll do the uh, I've got a stifado that I did for her for the meal which her and the bands and Earl really enjoyed um, I'm going to sort out the recipe but it's a recipe that's in here so I'll have to kind of maybe make one and just go through and I'll jot it all down as I go um, but yeah it's nice to know that you know you go to Scotland and give them something great to eat and they think it's absolutely fantastic which is brilliant in my eyes um, also Scots didn't or never had corned beef and potato like you know like corned beef pie like we have corned beef pasties down here and I, I was quite shocked by that. I was really, really surprised. I thought it was kind of... I mean, I know ham and peace puddings like kind of unique to here. But I had no idea that corned beef and potato, mashed corned beef and potato in pies was like something that was just unheard of up there. That seemed to go down well as well, but there again, what could be wrong with corned beef mashed potato in a pie? I mean, pretty much anything in a pie is spot on. So... Yeah, it's another little thing that uh, um, our Scots friends have have decided that. Yeah, that's nice. It'd be nice to see if they um, if they make corned beef and potato pie after this. Um, so yeah, we're gonna leave that for now. Um, like I say, over the next few days, I'll be um, I'll be dropping interviews into my YouTube channel. Um, anybody who's watching this, obviously, you'll have clicked through a link on YouTube. Can you please like it or? dislike it or give us some feedback on the um, buttons below because obviously it's important that I, I can see exactly what's got people's interest and what hasn't. I like to see I want to want to build on this channel a little bit this year we get a bit more drone photography on a bit more general video work and a bit more out and about blogging. Um, we live in an age where everything can be videoed and everything can be shot live and it's fantastic, it's a fantastic way for you know sharing places and experiences, so that's what I'm planning on doing this year. And also I'll share the pains of trying to screw little tiny pieces of plastic and metal together on my r 2 which will be a good laugh. Um, okay, thanks for watching and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye-bye. Right,